The city lights glittered, a cold, distant spectacle. Mr. Best barely noticed. From his penthouse, the world looked small. Not his world. His world was shrinking, crumbling. He poured himself another drink. Scotch. Neat. The ice clinked against the crystal, a sharp sound in the echoing silence of the apartment. He used to relish the silence. Now, it mocked him. News reports flickered on the large screen TV. His name, his face, the headlines screamed accusations, fraud, corruption. His empire, built on steel and concrete, was eroding. He took a long sip, the burn familiar, comforting. He was Mr. Best. He always won, didn't he? The newsroom buzzed, controlled chaos. Ben thrived on it. His fingers flew across the keyboard, each keystroke a hammer blow against injustice. He was close. He could feel it. Mr. Best. The name left a sour taste, a symbol of everything wrong. Power, greed, corruption. For months, Ben had been digging, following the whispers, the rumors. Now he had proof. Documents, emails, a trail of dirty money and dirtier deals. He could bring the whole rotten structure crashing down. He had to. The phone rang. His pulse quickened. This could be it, the final piece. The voice on the other end was hesitant, scared, but determined. I know things, the voice whispered. Things about Mr. Best. Emily Best had lived a life of privilege. Everything handed to her on a silver platter. But it came at a price. Her father's love felt conditional, transactional. His approval, a prize she could never quite grasp. She glanced at the file in her hands. Evidence. Damning evidence of her father's crimes. Her heart pounded. Loyalty warred with her conscience. She loved her father. But the man in those documents, the man who manipulated and exploited, was a stranger. He was destroying lives, ruining people. Could she stay silent? Her phone buzzed. An unknown number. A feeling of dread washed over her. This was it. The moment of truth. She took a deep breath and answered. Alex paced his office. Energy crackled around him. His company, a tech startup, was on the verge of something huge, disruptive, revolutionary. He wasn't in it for the money, not just the money. He wanted to change the world, make it better. And he saw an opportunity, a gap in the market, a gap Mr. Best's archaic empire had left open. He believed in innovation, in progress. Mr. Best represented the old guard, clinging to power, resistant to change. Their rivalry wasn't personal. It was about the future. Alex checked the stock prices. Best Corp was plummeting. His own company was soaring. The old order was crumbling. The future was now. Section 5, Seeds of Corruption. Mr. Best surveyed the city from his office window. He built this, this city, this company, this empire. It was his. He remembered the early days, the risks he took, the sacrifices he made. He wasn't afraid of hard work, of getting his hands dirty. He did what he had to do. Somewhere along the way, the lines blurred. He started cutting corners, bending the rules, then breaking them. It was so easy, he had the power. Who would stop him? He justified it to himself. Everyone else was doing it. He was just playing the game, winning the game. But the game had changed, and he hadn't noticed. Not until it was too late. Section 6. Whispers in the Wind. Ben's phone wouldn't stop ringing. Each call brought new information, new leads. The story was exploding. Mr. Best's empire was crumbling under the weight of its own corruption. He had tapped into something bigger than he imagined. Years of deceit, of exploitation. The whispers were becoming screams. Everyone had a story to tell, a grievance to air. He spoke to former employees, victims of Best Corp's ruthless practices. He listened to their stories, their pain. It fueled his determination. He would expose the truth, no matter the cost. His editor cautioned him, be careful. Mr. Best was powerful. He had ways of making problems disappear. But Ben refused to be silenced. He had a responsibility. The truth had to come out. Section 7. The walls close in. The news reports were relentless. Each one chipped away at Mr. Best's carefully constructed facade. His world, once so secure, was collapsing. He paced his office like a caged animal. His phone calls went unanswered. 
His closest advisors, once eager to please, now avoided his gaze. He was alone. The board of directors was meeting. He could feel the ground shifting beneath his feet. They were plotting, he knew it, whispering behind his back, ready to throw him to the wolves. He had to act. He had to regain control, but how? The walls were closing in. Section 8, A Daughter's Choice. I feel torn. My father, the man who had always seemed invincible, is vulnerable, broken. I want to reach out to comfort him, but the truth stands between us, a chasm impossible to bridge. I think of Ben, the journalist who is risking everything to expose my father's crimes. He is doing what is right, what I should be doing. The weight of my silence crushes me. I have to make a choice, protect my father and be complicit in his lies, or stand up for what is right, even if it means destroying my family. I pick up my phone. My hand trembles. This call will change everything. Section 9. The Empire Falls. The news broke like a tidal wave. Emily's testimony, her evidence, was the final blow. Mr. Best's empire, built on a foundation of lies and deceit, crumbled. The stock market reacted instantly. Best Corp shares plummeted. Investors panicked. The once mighty corporation was now a sinking ship. Lawsuits followed, shareholders demanding justice, victims seeking compensation. The legal system, so easily manipulated by Mr. Best in the past, now turned against him. He watched it all unfold on TV, a numb spectator to his own downfall. His world, his empire, his legacy, reduced to ashes. Section 10, Redemption's Price. The courtroom was packed. Cameras flashed. Mr. Best, once a titan of industry, now stood accused. Stripped of his power, his wealth, his dignity, he saw Emily across the room. Her eyes filled with sadness met his. He knew he had failed her, failed himself. As the judge read the verdict, a strange sense of peace washed over him. Guilty, he deserved it. He had spent years outrunning his demons. Now he had to face the consequences. Redemption, he realized, would not come from power or wealth. It would come from accepting responsibility for his actions, from facing the wreckage he had created and trying to rebuild. It would be a long and difficult road, but it was the only way forward.